Hey everyone, welcome to the Odinic School of Mysteries. My name is Bear. I was not planning on doing this particular video today. I was planning on doing a video on the on the introduction to symbol reading. I made notes, I practiced, I went over all the things I was supposed to go over, I came home, I set up my computer, I sat down to record, and suddenly I realized that I'm not supposed to talk about that today. I'm supposed to talk about what a god is. Specifically, I'm supposed to talk about how you can have many gods and one god at the same time. It just hit me. I haven't practiced this. I haven't rehearsed this. I have no notes so this is going to be um an interesting video to say the least so you may have to see me be vulnerable you know you may have to see me struggle to um explain something and that's fine uh we're just gonna we're just gonna push right on so this is this is gonna be interesting Okay, as I said before, I, I, need, I really need, need to ask you this in a very sincere way. Can you, can you entertain an idea without accepting it? Can you entertain an idea without accepting it? Can you mold it around in your head? Can you look at all its angles without feeling like you have to believe it? It's harder than it seems. People have a hard time with it. Because this is going to be unlike anything you have ever heard before. And I don't care. This is this is the case if you're a polytheist. You know, you believe in gods you, and you don't believe in just one god. Or if you believe in just one god and you don't believe in many gods. This is going to be unlike anything you have ever heard before. And which is more, this is this is as it was known to the ancients, and this is what, how it is known to the mystery schools. So, if you're ready for something that is totally new, you've never heard of before, this is going to be a very interesting video. And this happens to be one of my favorite topics a lot of what we do in the mysteries a lot of what uh, we deal with here is the reconciliation of paradoxes the reconciliation of paradoxes so how is it possible to have many gods and one God at the same time. First off, right from the beginning, we need to address kind of the major elephant in the room, right? What is a God? You ever asked that, yourself that question? A lot of people, you know, they, they say they believe in God or they have some notion of spirituality. Um, you know, a lot of people believe that there's some sort of spiritual force in the universe, whether or not it's cares about them or not is a different story. You know, a, a lot of people actually believe that there is something out there. But have you ever asked yourself, what is a god exactly? Now, in one of my videos, um, I think it was in my... I'm still kind of hoarse from being sick. Um, I, I think it was in my truth video where I said that the English language is woefully insufficient. And in this instance is another one of those instances where the English language is woefully insufficient. Because the word God, as they what they, they say in law school, it's something that proves too much. 
there's far too many things that fall under that category of God. God is a noun, it's a verb, and it's descriptor. I could say that I am a war god, I'm a sex god, or I'm a god at playing basketball. You know, I could say I'm a god, or I'm the god. So what do we mean? The tendency in these type of situations, I think, is that people, they want to go to etymology, which is fine. Which is fine to go to etymology and we just go and look up what God originally meant. You know, it comes from a, nurse, a Norse word, goat, G-O-T. Um, but, you know, words change over time. Right. So, just looking up an etymology, in my opinion, in my opinion, isn't going to get us where we need to go. So, I'm not going to go down that road. If you're interested in the etymology of God, go for it. But what I am interested in is how the ancient people and how the mystery schools in general viewed a god. What did they consider something that was divine? Because that's essentially what we're talking about here. We're not talking about, we're not necessarily talking about just the big guy in the sky. We're talking about what, what qualifies as divine. And... To us, you know, for the last 2,000 years, well, well the last um, 1,800 years, I would say, since Constantine, the way that we viewed God was very much given to us by what you could say, quote-unquote, the modern church, modern Christianity, the Judeo-Christian worldview, where you have one creator... You have a Holy Ghost, which may or may not be feminine, depending on what sect you're from, and you have a son. Right. And that's it. There's no, in that worldview, there's nothing in between. There's nothing between man and the, the divine being. Um, you know, like I said before, that ancients, uh, that we see ourselves, we see physical matter as the primary source of creation and then they're just on the outskirts somewhere there's god who's just kind of looking in observing us so um, modern man we see creation as primary primarily physical with a small secondary section that is spiritual ancients was just the it was just the opposite they saw creation as almost entirely and exclusively spiritual with matter us, where we are now in the underworld, being interred in our physical bodies, this was the outlier. This was the outlier of, of creation. We're the odd ones out. Most people are not here. Most creation isn't visible by a human. So the way that they saw things that were divine is different than the way a modern uh, Abrahamic I think I said that word wrong. Religion would see God. It's different. <coughs> it's different. Okay. So what did they what did they what did the ancients consider what something that is divine? What do they consider that as? Well, turns out their standard for what something that what they sorry, let me try that again. It turns out that their standard for what something that is divine is is very broad something that is divine essentially a god was anything that had a higher consciousness than the person talking that's it 
It was any anything that had a higher consciousness than the person talking. So this could be anything from um, anything from a higher a ghost with a higher than average IQ to the creator of all things itself. There is a huge strata between us and what is considered the top guy. Because remember, we're considered the bottom of the barrel. We're at the lowest rung of the, the nine heavens, I guess you could say. Um, we're, we're, we're at the lowest vibration. We're interred in matter. Right. And so there was a difference that was understood between the gods... And what the Greeks called, or what the Hermeticists call, the All. <clears throat> we talked before about the Kabbalion. The Kabbalion is called the Master Key. It's a set of seven principles. That if you understand those seven principles, there is no question that essentially doesn't have that you don't have an answer to, because it allows you. To unlock every door and each principle is a, a piece of law essentially it's a it's a function of the universe and by observing those functions you can it gives you the ability to kind of unlock anything you need so And the first of those seven principles goes a little like this. I'm going to do this off the top of my head. I think it's the, the all is all and is in all. Something like that. Which means that what this principle means is that there is a first cause. There is one cause that started all other causes. And all things, all things exist within the mind of the all. The all is so big and so expansive that there is nothing essentially, at least not that we're aware of, that exists without it. Uh, by without, I mean outside of, right? So for us, for example, if I wanted to build a house, I can go I could go outside of myself and I could go to the supermarket and I could buy sandwiches for lunch. I could go to the lumber store and pick up my lumber. I can go to the tool shed and pick out a tool and then I could go out into the wilderness and cut down a tree and then you know you cut it up in the boards and you build a house we have the opportunity to go outside of ourselves to do that kind of thing the all cannot do that there are things that are outside of its own ability to do so all things the only way for the all to create anything is through its own mind its own mind. It is genderless, it is all expansive, and it is all a mind. And <clears throat> so all things from the highest of gods to the lowest of mankind, to the cells, to the atoms, and so on and so forth, are all exist in the same mind and we're all patterned after the same mind which is where you get the term as above, so below from. All things consist of the same patterns over and over and over again. It's because we're created in the same image 
of the all. The same image of the all. We, all things follow its own pattern because all it knows is itself. Does that make sense? So, with that said, we have ourselves the world tree here. I just quickly, I just quickly drew it. So, you know, down here we have like us, for example. And then the higher you go, the closer you get to the source, the higher the vibration, the faster things move. And the faster things move, the higher the consciousness, which is why you hear the new age move, movement people say all the time without, as far as I know, they don't actually know what they're talking about. I don't, I don't have very high opinion of the new age movement. I'm just going to put that up there anyway, but you hear it saying, you know, you need to raise your vibration. It is kind of, that's basically what they, what they're saying without realizing it is that the higher you vibrate, the higher the transitory energy you get and the higher the transitory energy energy you get, essentially you start climbing that ladder. It's like a reserve reverse sieve. Like you're going to mush for gold, mush for gold. I don't know what it's called. Sip, sift for gold that's what it is sift for gold you know and you're you sifting the gold and then all the big stuff all the big rocks fall to the bottom and then the medium rocks and then you know so on and so forth until the precious stuff is on the stuff is is on the very top and that is essentially what we're dealing with here This is called um, the whole process of transmutation from one from base metal all the way up to gold. It's called alchemy, mental alchemy. That's where the terms of like the sorcerer's stone, you know, those kinds of things, that is what it's referring to. You're burning off the base metals, all the nonsense, all the underworld garbage, all the sticky mud and all that gross um, gross matter that we don't like and then we slowly transform ourselves um, back into what we're supposed to be it's essentially called the journey back to the source so um, there's an old Greek axiom that says all things are in the process of becoming all things are in the process of becoming all things are in the process of becoming so as the cycles progress, essentially, us and the gods are on the same journey. The gods are just essentially, as I said, anything that has a consciousness above us. Some of them are basically, I don't know how to put it. You could almost say they're like us, but a cycle above. Right. They've gone the path before us they've already they're up above where we are and some you could say are below it well i would say they're below us but you know what i mean so at least in the heathen worldview um, i can't necessarily speak to other polytheistic societies but i can speak to the heathen side of things in the heathen side of things, we don't worship our gods. We don't worship our gods. Our gods are seen essentially as older brothers and sisters. You know, like you like you would see like your father, for example. You don't really worship your dad. You look up to your dad. You get into a financial bind and you ask your dad for help. But they are not worshipped. They're just like us. They're just they're just above us, I guess you could say, in the, in the system. You know, then they get all the way up here to the top, and then eventually the gods themselves, they die and have to come back, back, back down, and have to endure the underworld just like we are. 
all things, the pattern persists over and over and over again. Although, it is said that, you know, the higher you go, you never quite fall as far as you did the first time. So, let's say, um, so like for us, for example, we fell, presumably, and now we're here in the underworld. But as we progress the system, when a god will fall into the underworld, maybe hypothetically say that he would become a planet or something like that. So you're, you're like, you're not just a, a human body anymore. You're something that's more complex and bigger than what you were, but you're still in matter. You're still interred. Your light still can't escape. And you have, you're dealing with similar problems, but just on a higher level than you did the first time. And as you kind of go through this cycle over and over and over again, you slowly start climbing your way back to the source. Back to the source. And um, there's a lot of mystery concerning about what that entails. How do you get there? You know, what is the source looking for? What are the gods looking for? You know, the higher you go, the more authority you have over others. And so, you know, there's gods who are far better and some that are far worse. You know, um, the tendency, I think, is to see the gods as this monolith, this, uh, um, like, they're either pure good or they're pure evil or, or whatever. Gods are like people, right? There's good parts to them and there's bad parts to them. They could be assholes. Um, but that's just kind of part of the reality of, of what we're dealing with. And it's, uh, I mean, it's not, it's not really an easy idea to grasp, but I know. But essentially that's the way it works. That's how you have, let's say you can have two things that seem contrary actually be true at the same time. How do you have many gods and one god at the same time? How do you have an all, a creator of all things, and many gods? Well, you have a mind, essentially, in which all things exist within, and that includes the gods. People, um, especially the heathen community, hate this idea because the heathen community, just like any other religious community, get stuck in the dogma. They will read the texts, they'll read the the, the have them all, or they'll read you know, any of the Eddas and all those other Norse poetry, and they'll say, well, in the lore, it doesn't expressly say there's a creator of all things. But there has to be. There has to be a creator of all things, because... Um, there's a bunch of creation that already exists at the beginning of our creation story. Which is more, people discount the world tree. People discount this. They, because they're stuck in the dogma, they see this as only just a tree. Right? This is more than just a tree. The mystery behind this is profund is profundity the there is a lot going on there in meets the eye so you have to be willing to read the symbolism you have to be willing to think you have to be willing to ask hard questions ask what if questions that's a big one what if what if the world tree is the creator of all things. What if? What, what, what would that look like? I can contend, at least on a representative level, this is essentially what we're dealing with. This is the creator of all things, symbolically speaking, in a very primitive way of being able to understand him. It. It doesn't have a gender. But it, it has... So you have like the creator of all things, the one mind, and then you have its two aspects. Remember, up here is the positive, the sacred masculine, and down here is the sacred feminine. 
God the Father, God the Mother. Remember, we covered that. How even so, even though you have one mind, this even looks like a brain, right? <clears throat> even though you have one mind, there's still a God the Father and God the Mother within it, and a God the Son here in the middle, which if you're dealing with a magnet, you know, that would be where the God the, the Son would be. It's, it gets really fascinating. It gets really fascinating, and the symbolism gets really thick. So, it's uh, it's worth thinking about, is all I'm saying. It's worth pondering. The ancients were not stupid people. There was a lot going on there in Meets the Eye. So, to recap real quick, I'm at uh, 25 minutes. Um, the ancients believed a, a god, uh, or a spiritual being, or a... Or a divine being is anything that had a higher consciousness than ourselves. So that's anything from like an enlightened ghost all the way up to the creator of all things itself. Um, which is why a lot of people were deified. A lot of people were deified. You know, Pythagoras was deified. Um, Orpheus was deified. A lot of people were deified that were just people who just happened to be you know, folks who understood the mysteries or whatever. Um, so that that's that's why that happened, because it wasn't a big deal for them. Because what constituted a god wasn't really a huge leap to us. It's a, to modern man, it's a huge leap. We think we see this god as this huge, huge thing when not when they didn't see that necessarily as the case. <clears throat> That's why you can have a god of a river, a god of a particular mountain, you know, a god of a sky, a thunder god. Gods, you know, were things like, uh, often were things that they didn't quite understand, you know, like gods of weather, gods of fertility, gods of the rain, gods of harvest, you know. So, uh, gods considered were kind of a throw-all term for anything that either they didn't understand or anything that was above the consciousness of man. And um, the second point was, again, all things exist within the mind of the all. All things exist within the mind of the all. All things exist within the mind of the all. And we are in the journey back to the source. We have fallen... From the source all the way down to the bottom now we're interred in matter and now we're working our way back up you know all things are in the process of becoming doesn't matter if you're in the sand of the sea right if you're just a little piece of sand on the ocean floor you are in the process of becoming something bigger than yourself and I know uh, I said, I know that this is a different idea. This is a whole new way of doing things. Totally different. I get that. It's going to, if you're new to this, it might take a little bit. And that's fine. There is, I say all the time, there's no expectation of belief. I'm not trying to convert you. I have no interest in converting you. Uh, my interest is to getting you to think. I want you to ask questions. I want you to think. I want you to step outside of your boundaries. I want you to get a little uncomfortable. And you need to, um, you know, my goal is to get you to start seeing things for the way that they really are. And the, the mystery school doctrines, they do that. They have a way of doing that. They start asking hard questions, getting you to think about something, start connecting those paradoxes and after a while you know you start connecting enough of those paradoxes you are becoming one mind <laughs> you know you're, you're on your way back to the source right there's all these all these things time and space paradox complete you know uh, many gods one god paradox unified which is right creation or evolution paradox unified how are these both the same at once are they both true at once? All these things start collapsing onto each other 
you know, it's like the reverse Big Bang. <laughs> you know, it's like all these things start collapsing on one another, and before you know it, it's all one. And that, that's kind of the, the cool, cool mystery of the whole thing. So, like I said, I didn't, uh, I hope that was okay. I didn't, re I didn't, um, I didn't uh, rehearse it. I didn't even write notes. I just sat down, was about to push. I had practiced something else entirely, sat down to record and realized that shit, I'm supposed to say something else. So. I hope that you take that well, um, and because uh, I understand it's, you know, this is all new territory, and I was very uncomfortable the first time I heard it too. I was very uncomfortable. I grew up, I grew up in a Christian household, and I was a little kid. My my parents were pretty fundamentalist. You know, we didn't do Halloween. We didn't do any of that stuff. Um, Anything outside of the church was sinful. You know, we only listened to Christian music. And, um, but, you know, I always really loved God. I truly loved God. And I wanted, the one thing I knew for sure was that the truth was the truth. And I wanted to know the truth. So I left the church in order to find God, which is kind of funny. And, you know... I found my way into shamanism, and then I found my way into the Norse mysteries, and here we are. So, but it was really hard. It was really hard to, to be confronted with some of that stuff. You know, I get it. Um, it took a long time. You know, I spent a lot of time wondering whether or not if I, if I was evil or not, for even considering that there might be many gods. But I knew I still loved the source. I still loved the big God in the sky. And it took a long time. It took a long time for me to be able to reconcile those things. It's one thing to know something intellectually. You like to hear me just say it. And it's a whole other thing to really absorb the truth and understand it on a spiritual level in here. So... Uh, I, I relate, right? I get it. I really do, because I've been there. You know, um, where I am now represents thousands and thousands of hours of study, work, and that's really the only difference between me and you guys. That's really the only difference in, between me and you guys. It's just that I've I started before you, and my goal, hopefully, you know, I'll turn this to a friend that. My goal is to do all this work for you so you can surpass me and then go out and teach others. I want you to be masters of all this stuff. I want you to be set free. I want you to go teach others. I want you to be happy. And yeah. Anyway, I love you all. Have a wonderful day. And um, take very good care of yourselves. All right? Bye.